Hello YouTube world, Mac Daddy 1911A1 here with the Shade Tree Survivalist. Don't feel like doing a hell of a lot this weekend, so I decided to share some of my older art with you guys. Just because I don't have anything else to do and I don't really feel like doing a hell of a lot more. Decided to do this, start off the video with this uh, drawing that I did back in 2004. This is uh, titled LZN NAM. Back my phone up a bit here. Pan up. And you can see the helicopter in the background. Uh, because of the width of the screen of the phone and so forth, it just, you can't get it all in there and it, and it look good. <clears throat> so this is best I can really do with it. But got this from a black and white photograph from a Time Life book on of Vietnam and I just thought I'd share it with you guys um, the reason I decided to start out with it my brother Brad Brad All-American just did a, a picture of a UH-1 Huey uh, manufactured by Bell Aircraft back in the day and I was like well hell I got one of a UH Huey too by golly and there it is as well as, of course, some American soldiers. They're watching another helicopter take off, I believe is what the illustration in the book said. Um, but that's one of, the, one of the better ones that I did back in the day. And during this period of time back in 04, and I uh, made this on uh, December 7th, 2004, uh, the anniversary of Pearl Harbor. Um, but I was just trying to learn how to draw from different angles and aspects and shade and shadow. And um, I don't think I was at home. I think I was actually stuck out on the road somewhere. And uh, that's the reason for the yellow legal pad note paper. But this is World War I SPAD biplane fighter. And I believe it was manufactured by the British. And uh, I just thought that was one cool photograph and picture and so i did it um it was one of the uh seems like it was one of the better fighters of that period and when we were kids we all had an offense i mean a, just a, a massive affection for the biplane fighters of that era and the triplanes of course and um uncle fester used to do uh do the snoopy cartoon um with his doghouse and all that but it was always you know talking about the red baron he was trying to fight the red baron well the red baron um he flew a uh, biplane as well as a later on a fucker um triplane with three wings but i just i enjoyed really enjoyed drawing that one there next photograph this was also on december 7th 2004 is just a horse stable that's like out in the out west in the uh in the mountains and so forth and uh i really really enjoyed this one here it really came out so nice and uh so i figured i'd share it with you guys also just something a little different than than what you would normally see from me but um it was an old barn i think that thing was abandoned because it looks like there was some damage to the roof <clears throat> or maybe I never went back and finished it or whatever. I don't remember. It's <laughs> been 14 years. But that is the end of these, uh, for these drawings. And now I'm going to show you guys some of the earlier drawings from when we were teenagers back in the 80s. And uh, we'll go from there. All right, next photograph was, uh, or next picture is an R model Mac that I drew probably in 1996. It was before I really got to study in the trucks and so forth. And the suspension is off. Um, it's the exact opposite of where it needs to be. The camelback arch is over and the pivot point is down here. The drive shaft is going way down here when it actually is right in between the frame rails because on a Mac rear end, the uh, differential is on top of the banjo. But overall, it's some pretty, it looks pretty damn good. It's got seven inch straight pipes on it. It looks damn good. Even got the bulldog on the hood, but that ain't it. And that ain't all. Okay, now this would be an R model tractor. 
I, I messed up and forgot to put the top of the air cleaner, the breather over there. Um, <clears throat> but that's pretty damn close to the mark. Uh, 48 inch stand up sleeper, headache rack between the stacks. The stacks are actually mounted to the headache rack, air ride cab. It's got the big uh, grill on the front. You can see it shining right there. The bulldog on there. The dual air tanks under the battery box, which they stopped make, doing that in the 70s. But it says at the top, Mac, our model Mac, the legend lives forever. Power, durability, quality. And it was also from the mid-90s. This, this was one of my first attempts 32496. I had had my license for about a month and I was waiting on my birthday. I had six or seven days to wait um, before I could actually, um, before my 21st birthday, before I could actually drive. I had my license, but I couldn't legally drive because nobody had insured me. And so I was sitting around just fantasizing. Um, the fuel tank, the the step slash battery boxes, those are not Mac. Okay, that's like a piece of trash. But back in the day, before I really got studying on the subject, I didn't know. Um, I got the damn turbo on the wrong side. It's showing the turbo on the left side. It's actually on the right side of almost every single engine I've ever seen. Um, it's got the Bulldog. It don't look much like a Bulldog, but it has it nonetheless. But the stacks on it with the turnouts pointed toward the viewer. Pogo stick with the airlines and electrical lines. It's even got the tiny little airline for the uh, sliding fifth wheel. And you can see the little teeth right there, which would uh, locks the fifth wheel in. Got the quarter fenders. Air ride. That's new way air ride suspension, ladies and gentlemen. And at the time, I was waiting, but as soon as my birthday rolled around, I went to work for Timberline Transport out of Eastman, Georgia, which I do not believe... It even exists anymore. But you can see the dash, the gear shifter, the seat, the mirror, the, the main mirror, the spot mirror, the air horns, the uh, marker lights, the visor, the windshield. I mean, it really good. And that is in the wrong place. I, I just noticed that. They actually have one like on an old style pickup or car where you push the button in, you hit the handle and you push the button in, not like a Freightliner or a you know cab overs and stuff like that so some of the small details got wrong but overall yeah badass how about that bulldog mac i don't know why i had to put the mac behind the bulldog but you can definitely see it says mac on his collar that is the hood ornament the bulldog hood ornament and it said if it ain't a bulldog it's probably his soon to be lunch tenfold roger and I got that about a month before I bought my Mack truck. So I got it in May, and this I drew this April 9th, 2006. So last weekend, I take Kimo out to the junk stores, antique shores, and so forth. And I found this old truck right here. And I'm a John Deere fan, no doubt about it. But from across the room, it wasn't the John Deere, Moline, Illinois, number 101, that I saw. It was the truck. That hood right there caught my attention instantly. You see that stylized M and the way that nose of that hood is? And the grill, the rear radiator. That is so recognizable if you're a Mack truck person because, boom. If you're a real Mack truck person, you instantly recognize the model AC, chain-driven Mack truck. The original Bulldog as nicknamed by British soldiers during World War One. Before we got involved in the war, we were selling... Mack trucks to the British and they found that they were the toughest damn truck on the planet. Um, I do not have a date on this, but this is an original Mack AC model truck. 
And that's when I saw the model, the, the uh, collectible here, I instantly recognized it, not because of John Deere, but because of that damn hood style. And right there, it says Replica Mac, model 1920, or 1926 Bulldog. And you'll notice that they manufactured it. Actually, I think it's supposed to be 1928, but anyway, from 1916 forward. And... Uh, it was produced prolifically. But yeah, I love me some Mack trucks, baby. I'll just, I'll just let you feast your eyes on that for a minute. Now, right off the bat, let's go ahead and knock this out. I, it is, it is crooked. I don't know why I didn't go back and straighten it out at the time, and I didn't. I never went back and put the bulldog on the hood, but that's a Mac RS 700. That was actually the photograph, the original photograph I took that from came, or that truck was in uh, going downhill big time. The buildings were level. The truck was downhill, and it was in San Francisco, and I was like, Dad, gum, you will notice I got the Camelback correct. But that was about it. This one is one of the very best I ever drew, hands down, with except one exception. I didn't, I forgot to put the freaking bulldog on the hood. Shame on me. This is a 1980 R686 ST day cab tractor, Mack truck, an R model Mack. Okay, love this picture. I did, this, like I said, I did so really well in this, this uh, picture and, um, it's one of those pictures, you know, you're just proud that you did. Just came out so freaking nice. Other than the fact I forgot the damn bulldog, damn it. All right, and that's the truck right there that I was drawing. Now, I didn't. I don't like the long fuel tanks. They just don't look right on them. I like the standard fuel tank, which would end right there where that black strap is at. But, man, that thing looks so freaking nice. And that's the truck I drew. And there you go. That's my drawing. And that's the photograph. So, yeah, I think it came out real nice. Really nice. All right, ladies and gentlemen, right off the bat. Now, this is a, a copy of the drawing that I made and that I sent to Uncle Fester. This is the best freaking truck drawing ever. But it is a photocopy. I mean, I, I did it on my copier so I could send him the original. But it was so freaking nice, I could not stand the idea of not having a copy of it. So I sent, I, I made a copy for myself, and I sent the other one to him. Now this, I think, actually came out a little better. It's another copy. And I drew this on the 23rd of September, 2006. And uh, this is the second I, I, I did some adjusting on it where the shadows and all came out a little bit better. But hands down, and I was on the phone with him talking the entire time I was drawing this truck and it came out so freaking nice. I mean, is it good as uh, other people can do it? No, but I, I just, I was so happy with it. It came out. I mean, I see a lot of mistakes sitting here looking at it, but to be drawing this photograph or this, this uh, picture while I'm on the damn telephone with Uncle Fester, and it to come out that freaking nice was just amazing to me. But that is not it, and that is not all. I know it's not perfect, but do you know who that is? Brad All-American just did a, a drawing of this particular person. I think anybody and everybody could recognize that, if nothing else, the nose. Um, the neck didn't come out quite right. It was too thick, and I just, I was scared. I was afraid I was going to ruin it. But that is the shootest, as played by John Wayne in his very last feature film. And uh, <clears throat> it's in portrait, and I don't want to turn the phone and wreck it because I don't have my editing program to fix it. So that's the best I can do. Let me see if I can get it over here. Back it off a little bit. But yeah, I got the hat. 
the hat wasn't perfect and nor was the his neck was too thick right here from here to here it just didn't quite come out the way i wanted it to but um yeah, i drew that in uh, august 24th 2007 and i think it came out really nice but these are just some drawings random and truck drawings the next video i'm going to do is on legacy drawings from my back when i used to make my own um characters and vehicles and so forth like uh, gi joe stuff and so forth but anywho that's for another video this thing is already going to take all freaking data upload thank you very much for watching this is mac daddy 1911 may one with the shade tree survivals y'all be good and stay tuned for the next video